Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to a brand new video. My name is Prince Mason. In today's video, I'll be explaining how Dodge and Burn works to you guys, and I'll also be showing you guys my new Dodge and Burn technique. Now, with that being said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you subscribe and do not forget to hit the bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you can receive notifications every time I put up a new video. Also, like, comment, and share this video with anybody you feel like will want to see this. This helps the channel a lot. Now, let's get straight into today's dodging and burning video. Now, what's dodging and burning? Dodging and burning is literally messing with your highlights and your shadows so you can create more depth in your image. And it's just the same thing as when a makeup artist does highlighting and contouring. Because after you've retouched your image, like a makeup artist, after you've actually put a foundation or whatever on the client's face, your subject tends to look flat. Now you need to put more dimension into your subject. You need to make your subject stand out. And that's where dodging and burning or highlights and contouring as a makeup artist, you know, come into play. If you look at a 2D text, the difference between a 2D text and a three-dimensional text is that there is highlights and shadows in the 3D text. That's just it. So what dodging and burning literally does is it takes an image that is a little bit flat and it adds highlights and shadows in some specific places and makes your image have more depth and makes it look more three-dimensional. Now, in today's image, um, I shot this image of Atuke a while ago and I picked it specifically because I changed the background to almost match her skin tone. So she's blending into the background. Now, we're going to dodge and burn her and make her stand out from the background. Now, this image was lit very well and I actually like how it looks. But um, there's a lot of depth and dimension to her face. You know, you can see her cheekbones and everything. But we're going to make it more pronounced with dodging and burning. Before we get into that, I'm going to show you guys where to dodge and burn when you're working on a beauty image. It is very, very key to understand these things. It's the same thing as when the makeup artist is doing highlighting and contouring. So now I'm just going to pick a red brush. Uh, probably just increase my hardness, reduce the size, and I'll explain some things to you guys. When you are dodging and burning, you have to know specific places to dodge and burn. Now in this image, I know I want to dodge, so one of the first places I'll start from will be her forehead. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I reduced the flow of my brush, so that's 100. So I'll start from her forehead right here. I'll make sure I dodge that part. You see under her eyes here, yeah? I'll make sure I dodge this part. I'll make sure I dodge this part. These are the global parts that I'll dodge, right? And right here, I like this place. Then probably somewhere around here, just I'll be very subtle with it. Somewhere around here too. Now this, or these are the places that I'll make sure I dodge and burn when I get into, sorry, I'll make sure I dodge when I get into this image. For burning, I'll create a new, pick a blue brush. You really do not have to do this. I'm just showing you guys where you have to dodge and burn. So the red places will be for the dodge and the blue places will be for the burn. Right here. Burn. Right here. Then I'll burn these places. And right here, right here. Then go back to my red brush. Then I'll dodge right here. And right here. Now, literally, this is just for her face, and this should explain something to you. Dodging is when you are actually working on your highlights, and burning when you are working on your shadows. So dodge will work on the highlights, burn will work on the shadows. I hope you guys are understanding. So like I said, you dodge the highlights, you burn the shadows, and there are specific places that you burn. So dodging is literally highlighting. Burning is contouring. So you highlight or contour your subject to make your subject look more three-dimensional. You dodge or you burn your subject to make your subject, you dodge and burn your subject, I mean, to make your subject look more three-dimensional. I hope I've explained dodging and burning the best and the simplest way I can. It is literally taking an image that looks flat, adding highlights and shadows to some specific places to make your image have more depth. How I dodge and burn is by using curves adjustment. I know a lot of people use 50% gray, to dodge and burn and that's fine if that's what works for you that's great but for me i prefer curves adjustment the reason is because with 50 percent gray the more you go if you are dodging your image starts and um, tends to look white when if you're burning your image tends to look black because there's actually no limit to how far you can go but with curves adjustment layers you know you have a set point where you cannot go past 
Now, how I do that is by creating a curves adjustment. You can come down here, click, um, create curves adjustment layer right here, or you can come to layer, new, sorry, <laughs> new, new adjustment layer, then curves. So what we're going to do now is this our layer right here, this our curves adjustment layer, we're going to change our blend mode right here to screen. You can see it's bright and bright means dodge. So this is going to be our dodge layer. Click your curves adjustment layer, make sure that your layer mask is highlighted, then invert it. The way you invert is command I on Mac, control I on PC. Now I've inverted it, white reveals and black hides. So when there's a mask on the layer, a white mask will reveal what's on that layer, a black mask will hide what is on that layer. And now we're going to hide this because we're going to bring it back with the brush. So we're going to create another curves adjustment layer. This time, would we'll multiply. You can see it's dark. And what is dark? Dark means burn. So now we're going to change this to burn. Now that we've changed this to burn, we're going to make sure that our layer mask is highlighted and we're going to invert it. So remember, white will reveal and black will hide. So now we're just going to invert this. Command I or Control I on PC and that's inverted. So now we have a dodge and burn layers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put both of them in a group by highlighting both, pressing Command G or Control G on a PC, Command G on Mac. Then I'll double click this and change it, double click the name right here and change this to dodge and burn. So now we have our dodge and burn layers created and the next thing we're going to do is dodge and burn this image. How are we going to do that? We're going to work with a brush. So you're going to pick a brush, dodge original brush, <laughs> make sure the hardness is set to zero. So you want a very, very soft brush and the size would depend on the surface area that you're dodging and burning. Now, if you're using a Wacom pen, I would advise you come down here to your brush preset, um, shape dynamics, make sure you change the control to pen pressure, and down here, change the, con um, the control here off, then round it just off. For transfer, you're going to change control to pen pressure, then down here, you change it to pen pressure too, then make sure you take smoothing. Now, the reason why you do this when you're using a Wacom pen is, it works with pen pressure. So basically, if you press down on your Wacom with your pen, you will get more paint from your brush. <laughs> and if you are light, then you get less paint. So if you are just um, going to, let's just make an example here with the white brush. If I press down now, you can see how it just turned white immediately. But if I'm very subtle with my brush, you can see how it's building up gradually. The moment I press, it gets white. Now that's why you do that, so that when you, you can press down in some places to just um, dodge and burn quickly, or you can just be very subtle and it's just going to apply um, a little white paint across that part. I hope this helps somebody out there. Now, with that being said, sorry about that. That was just quick for people that are using Wacom tablets, but if you're not, um, not just Wacom tablets, basically any type of graphic tab um, tablet, but if you're not, let's just go back to our dodge and burn. So we've picked the white brush and I'll set my flow to about five and my opacity to 100. So what this is, is opacity is how bright your colors from your brush will be, and your flow is how many times you would actually have to stroke before it will get to 100% opacity. So now that my flow is on 5%, I probably have to stroke 20 times, I guess, before it will get to 100% opacity. But yeah, that's just it. So let's get to dodging and burning. So now that we're on dodge, the thing you want to concentrate on are the highlights and there's a trick to help you see that. All you have to do is come down to your adjustment layer again and create a black and white layer. So when you create a black and white layer, you can mess with your yellows and mess with your blacks. This way you can see exactly where to dodge and where to burn. I work with frequency separation. So another trick I use is I turn off my frequency separation so I can see my image in the raw form. Literally, I can see the lights the same way they were in case maybe during my frequency separation, I blended some places, um, some places in too much that I wasn't supposed to. So I'll make sure I turn off my frequency separation, then I'll get to dodging and burning. So now I have a soft brush, my flow is on five, um, my opacity 100, then I'll just come down to dodge. If you're not using a Wacom tablet, you might have to reduce your opacity, depends. But if you're using a Wacom tablet or if you're using any kind of graphics 
tablet, this should work for you. Now I'm just going to paint into my highlights. And I'll be very subtle about that. I like that. Then I'll come here. I'll work on this place. Now, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm changing my brush size to match my surface area. I am not just using one size, you know, um, all through. I'm not just going to use one small brush to go through the whole image. Wherever I get to a certain place, like right here, if I want to dodge this place, I'm just going to make sure I reduce the brush to match my surface area here. Then I want to go the whole way right here. You can see her bags right here. I want to reduce that a bit. I have done a lot of that through frequency separation, but you know, for the sake of this video, let's just do that again. Right here, her nose, I like it, but it's a little bit bright already, so I do not want to mess with that too much. Then the chin here. Nice. So what I'm doing right now is just the global dodging and burning. I am not going inside to dodge and burn um, any details yet. I'm just going to dodge the, the highlights. And as you can see, I am not zooming in one-to-one -to, -one to dodge and burn. I This is how most people are going to look at this image. People are not going to zoom in to look at this image. So this is the best way to dodge and burn an image like this. I'm going to work on the collarbone right here. Just dodge there a bit, the neck. See all these places. Right here, then this too. So what I'm just doing is I'm dodging the highlights. So like I said, you dodge your highlights, the, br um, the bright part of your image, then you burn your shadows, the dark part of your image. So highlighting, dodging and burning, dodging I mean, <laughs> um, contouring, burning. So now that I'm done dodging the um, huge parts of the image, I want to go in and dodge the details. So her lips right here. Um, I'm applying a little bit more pressure on my brush now. Her eyes, I'm just going to make them a little brighter. Right here. Make that stand out. I can see this highlight right here. I'm going to bring that out. Okay, so now let's turn our frequency separation layer back on and let's turn our black and white off. And let's look at our before and after. This is our before and this is our after. See how far we have gone right now. Um, there's some places that I would like to just work on again. You can see right here. I'm just going to add some dodge to this place. Right here too. And this image already looks really good with just the dodge. So the next thing I want to do is I want to burn this image. Right, so I'm going to go to my burn, make sure that my brush is white. Again, my brush is soft, and I'm going to start burning my image. I always turn off my frequency separation so I can see where to dodge and burn very well, just in case for some reason I have messed up my retouching, which is very rare, but this is going to be a good trick for anybody that's just starting up. You know, sometimes it just flattens out a particular place and you want to bring back the highlight or the shadow in that place. This is a good tip to do that. So as you can see, the forehead here, yeah, I'm just going to burn this part. So what I'm doing right now is I'm burning, I'm burning the shadows right here. I'm working on my layer mask. Remember, white reveals and black hides. So if you paint the white brush on a black layer mask, it's going to reveal what is on that layer. Burn this part, cheekbone, down to her chin. And once again, as you guys can see, I'm not using one brush size. I'm going through a few brush sizes. You know, I'm picking a brush size that is relative to the area that I'm working on. If I'm working up here, I'm going to pick a brush, big brush. If I'm working down here, I'm going to pick a small brush. Right here, I'll pick a smaller brush. And another trick is that I dodge and burn. Um, the way I work with my brushes or the way I stroke my brushes is... Um, the same way the shape of that area is so if i want to dodge her cheekbone right here i'm not just going to draw uh, sorry a, a color bone i mean right here i'm not just going to draw a straight line i'm going to draw a curved line to show how exactly how the color bone is meant to look so if there's a place where you have to draw curved lines make sure you do that do not just draw straight lines 
you have to dodge and burn the same exact way the face is. All you're trying to do is you're just trying to create more depth with the exact shape of the person's face. The moment you start altering shadows and highlights on the person's face, you change how the person looks. So let's look at how this looks. So this is a dodge and burn. Now I can see that there's a little mistake here. I don't like how it looks there. And it's so easy to clean it. All I have to do is pick a black brush. Remember black hides and white reveals. I can just take my flow back to 100 and just brush in on this place. As you guys can see, that's gone. So all I have to do now is I can just go back to my white brush. If you, you can click X to toggle between both colors down here. Go back to my white brush, take my flow back to 5% and I can just work on this area again. Make it look better. Okay, that's great. Come down to my highlights, which is my dodge and just make this place look okay, better. And this is our image. Another thing I want to do is I want to burn her lips. Just right here. Above her nose, under her eyes, mm -hmm. okay. So let's see how this looks. Looks really good. Um, so now, the good thing about dodging and burning this way is that if for some reason you want to reduce the dodge or you want to reduce the burn, all you have to do is pick um, a black brush and just brush across the parts where you want to reduce. So right now I'm reducing my burn right here and I just have to pick a black brush and just brush. If I want to reduce here, I just pick a black brush and brush. And that will reduce it. Now, if for some reason I want to go, um, I want to reduce the whole um, dodge and burn around, across my subject's face, I can just reduce the opacity of my, look, that's my burn right there. That's how it looks. That's the opacity reduced to nothing. So right now I'm just going to leave it at like 74. And that works for me. And this is my highlights and this. So now I'm going to put my dodge and burn. I'm going to, okay, yeah, sorry. It's already in the folder. So let's look at this. This is our before. And this is our after. You can see how it's making our subject stand out of the background. Now, this is before, just looks like she's blending to the background. And this is after, before, after, before, after. Well, I hope this helps somebody out there. This is how I dodge and burn. And this is exactly what dodge and burn does to your image. It takes a picture that is a little bit flat and it adds more dimension and more depth to it. This is my dodge and burn technique. This is how I do my dodge and burn across all my images. And I hope this is helping you guys out there right now. And this is the end of today's video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you subscribe and do not forget to hit the bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you can be the first person to know when I put up a new video and I will put in a lot of videos this year. Also comment below, let me know what you feel about today's tutorial. I know I'm a little bit over the place. Um, I'm traveling, I'm working right now, and I really just do not have so much time, so I'm trying to just put out a tutorial for you guys. Also, share this video with anybody you feel like will love this video, or anybody you feel like this video will help. I'm trying to get this channel to 50,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.